This is the WeCrete Vision 40 watt diode laser and engraver. They sent it to us for free to use here in the shop. We've been putting it through its paces and it's time to let you know about the pros and the cons of this laser machine. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So they all just end up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Just get an Alfred backpack hanger. It's reliable, versatile, sturdy, and it holds your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today! Did you know that this video's sponsor, PCBWay, actually offers 3D printing services that I use? FDM, SLA, and SLS. I use them for larger SLA prints and for SLS nylon parts. They also offer laser centering for metal parts such as aluminum, stainless steel, titanium, and tool steel. Check them out for your next project. All right, we got it out with the old 50 watt CO2 laser up the stairs. There's the WeCrete box. Let's unbox it, see what's inside of this box. Well, well packaged, no chance of damage there unless you drop it big time. All right, also well packaged on the inside. I'm not crazy about all that styrofoam though. It really could be replaced with cardboard and be much better for the environment. Let's start assembling this thing. We'll hook up the fan unit uh, in the back, hook up the duct since we're using our own fan actually. And then there is an air assist, just like there was on the old CO2 laser and a tray on the bottom. We'll power the thing on and it expands we're having a look at how this thing works and it kind of calibrates itself the first time all right all right so far so good let's finish hooking it up to the exhaust so we're using the existing old exhaust fan from the previous laser we'll make a little adapter so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to cut some acrylic Let's try clear. Hmm, that looks awful. Hmm, that doesn't seem to work. Wonder what's going on there. Okay, let's try a piece of colored acrylic. Oh, equally as awful. Well, it turns out this is a diode laser, not a CO2 laser. You can't just put any acrylic in there. It's got to be a specific color. And black seems to work the best so lesson learned let's make a fingered box and you can find these files for download in fusion 360 you can change the size and the material thickness and the amount of fingers and all that stuff just by changing a couple of digits and you can get yourself a box so this is actually a mold box that we're going to print out now one of the cool things about this is the camera and you can change your artwork and move it onto the material that you want to cut with uh, very easily. So that is one of the nice things about this laser is the camera. Oh, let me hit start. Oh, let me walk over to the other side of the room and hit the button on the machine. It's Wi-Fi, by the way, but I still have to walk across the room to go hit the button to start the machine. Dumb. All right, have it cut out the parts. Looks like it's doing a decent job of that. All right, that's cool. Let's see how the parts go together. Let's assemble the mold box. And you'll notice right away here, the parts fit together, but they're really kind of loose. And I really wasn't sort of expecting that. Um, so we'll peel the paper off 
and we'll get this mold box assembled and we'll use some tape to hold everything together you also notice from the reflections here in this shot you can see the edges are a little curled uh, also something that I'm not used to with cut acrylic parts the parts fit kind of loose and that's also something I'm a little baffled by here but we'll use some tape to put everything together with and we'll tape this box up now, just for reference, uh, the part is made from a file. These are all line to line, so that they should be a little tighter than what we get here. Certainly in the past, if you cut something out on a CO2 laser, line to line parts would fit together snug at least. Um, but in this case, they're a little floppy. So we'll use some more tape, put everything together, call that good. We'll use this for some sort of a future casting project as a mold box. I'm sure we'll find a use for it. So, let's investigate what's going on. This is the parts cut out, and you can see they kind of wiggle around in here. Let's, let's take a look at one of these parts. So you can see the curved edges here from the laser. Also not normal for what I'm used to from a CO2 laser. So if somehow melting these things, um, I don't know if we're using too much heat or whatever, but that seems like what we needed to go through the acrylic and we'll check dimensional tolerances here. So this is supposed to be 10 millimeters, but it's 9.5. This one is supposed to be 20. It's 19.7. This one is probably supposed to be 30, and it's 29.6. 29.4, even worse. Let's try something a little more decorative, shall we say. Let's cut out one of the design and making logos. And so this has some cutting and some etching. That looks all right. Halfway, halfway decent. All right, here's one that's cut out on the outline. You can also see sort of the jaggedness of the laser. It's not real smooth uh, as well. And so here's a green one or a piece of green acrylic. It's a dark green acrylic, and that's what you get when you laser etch it. It makes it sort of light green. That's interesting, I guess. All right, here's a blue one. That's, of course, a blue uh, failure because it's a blue diode laser, so you can't cut blue material. So interestingly, we reached out, of course, to our contact at WeCrete, and there's no way to adjust for the kerf of the laser or to adjust for the, you know, inaccuracy of the laser cut. Here's my thoughts on the WeCrete laser. It has some pros, but mostly cons for me as a designer maker. I think if you're a hobbyist crafter, this machine could be great. Um, its ability to etch and cut wood is wonderful. If you are just engraving mugs all day, this machine is a great machine. I got this rotary tool uh, as well. Um, this would be great, but it's uh, inability to produce precision uh, parts uh, is a game over for me. It's just not going to work for me. That doesn't have the precision that I need as a maker, model maker, designer. Um, I do love the camera. Um, software that is just junior. Uh, is it's just not going to work for me. Uh, it does work with light burn, but it doesn't work over Wi-Fi with light burn. So what am I going to do? Run a USB cable, you know, 50 feet into the other room? Well, that's not going to happen. What's the point of having the Wi-Fi if you can't, you know, if you have to do that? Um, so I regret getting rid of my CO2 laser. If you are a manufacturer of a CO2 laser with a big bed, at least 30 by 50 or 300 by 500, however you want to break it up. Uh, even bigger would be better, actually, possibly with pass-through. 
uh, and you have a camera and you have decent software that's going to support uh, you know high quality parts then let's talk I'd be more than happy to uh, get your machine in here and make a video in exchange for that machine uh, to have something that is a workhorse that I can throw any kind of material at it um, let's talk get in contact with me and let's make it happen Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.